Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here. Today we're looking at the problem of not being able to rotate in the golf swing. And there's one big reason why most golfers have trouble rotating. It is your knee flex. If we can get the knee flex to change, you're going to see a much bigger body turn, so hip turn and shoulder turn, which translates to tons of power out there and a whole lot less effort. Let's look at knee flex. So knee flex is what you see here at address, my right knee, my trail knee is flexed. At the top of the backswing, I should see a change of knee flex if I want to get a bigger turn. The problem is most golfers have been taught to keep this knee flexed throughout the entire backswing. Now when this knee stays flexed, your body is restricted in how much it can turn. So then you end up getting into the problem of thinking you've got to go to the gym, you've got to practice certain stretching exercises just to be able to figure out how to work against your body. You're really just fighting your body here the more you keep this knee flexed. Now a lot of people will say it's creating power for you because you're feeling resistance. But power in the golf swing is not created by resisting, it's created by allowing. When we allow the body to turn, I can store more power in the hips and I can store more power in the shoulders. And the breakthrough piece for me when I first learned this concept, because I used to keep my leg flexed for a while, the breakthrough piece was this. Everybody was trying to get a 45 degree hip turn and a 90 degree shoulder turn, but while at the same time keeping this knee flexed. And that's just an oxymoron because you really can't do it unless you have really good flexibility or you're young, like I was, I'm young enough to do this. But for the average golfer, it's not going to happen because you're resisting your body. So when I straightened my leg, instead of keeping it flexed, there's rotation right off the bat. So in the top of the backswing, I had a straighter, straighter right leg. Look at my shoulders, I've already turned halfway now, 45. So the amount of shoulder turn I need to get to the top of my backswing is not 90. I only need to do 45 degrees. Now, most golfers can do 45 degrees of shoulder turn. That's awesome because you don't have to be limited here. You can get the same amount of shoulder turn that a tour pro gets just by straightening the trail leg. My backswing keeping the leg flexed, my backswing allowing the leg to straighten. All because I can get more shoulder turn. The power difference between the two is big because you've created that much more of a backswing while keeping the lead arm straight, which is good for contact. So it's not like we're just creating power and losing accuracy. No, we're preserving accuracy. If I keep the lead arm straight and I turn, it's going to allow the club to enter the ground the same spot every time. Another benefit to keeping this leg straightening is that it takes the stress off of the lower back and the knees. Your body's designed to work this way. So we don't fight our body in the golf swing. So I'm gonna hit a shot here focusing on straightening my trail leg, you'll see a change in knee flex. And that's why my swing feels so effortless. That's why I'll say to you, it feels like air, because I don't fight my body. I don't work off of a resistance model. It's scary to think that many people are promoting a resistance model now to the average golfer, when the average golfer and average human body is not designed to resist like that. Your body telling you resistance is telling you I probably shouldn't be going there. Rather, just allow it. Look at the best golfers. You'll see a change in knee flex. The only people you don't see changes in knee flex are people like Will Zalatoris, maybe even Neiman. Zalatoris has back pain. He's trying to create rotation with a flex leg, and he's 25 and he's got back pain, and he might even have knee pain if he continued down that track. Justin Thomas does the same. Everybody else that I see, McElroy even, you see a change in knee flex. Some do it more than others. The more you do it, the more power potential you'll have. Allow it to straighten, allow it to straighten. And it sounds great. When I keep that knee flexed, I am throwing power out the window. I'm throwing my body into a whole lot more stress. And I run the risk of doing something else that's really common. Swaying. So the longer you try and keep this knee in, I see a lot of golfers trying so hard to keep this knee in back, they try and reach for more, they stop here. So the only way they reach for more is by breaking the arms down, which results in inconsistent contact. We don't know where the club's gonna come into the ground because of that. Or you're going to sway your hips to the right to try and reach for a bigger backswing. 
And the more you flex, the more resistance you have, the more you end up swaying. So by straightening the leg instead of flexing it, you can create rotation, you can create a consistent contact point, and you can feel a lot less effort. It's body friendly. You'll watch with players on TV today a change in knee flex from the front view too. You'll see something looks like this, diagonal knees. The trail knee gets higher than the lead knee. So the trail knee is straightening, lead knee is going down. And it's essential if you want to stay centered in the golf swing for good contact. So contact in the same spot every time is from a rotational golf swing. I'm not going to flex my leg. Another good strike. Seeing a change in knee flex. If I keep it in, it's going to restrict my hip turn. Here's me trying to keep it in. I'm not going to manufacture a swing here. I'm just going to try and do a swing. For me, I feel like I can't turn as much. Contact suffered a little there. Yeah, it feels powerful, but that's just resistance. The most effortless swing possible, the most hip turn. I can really feel when I load up those hips, I can create a lot more rotation. Loading up the hips, meaning the more I straighten the leg. Let's try that again. That's how you create rotation. Allow it to straighten. Wow. A lot more swing speed on that one. Whoosh. It's like the sound gets better the more you straighten it. You see, that's like such a full bodied sound. I can create rotation automatically. Wow. It just keeps going. So why can't you create rotation? You can't create rotation because you've been focusing on flexing your leg too long. Eliminate the problem of flexing your leg, start straightening the leg, and you'll see results just like this, shot after shot. And if you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life right now, hit shots like that time and time again, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you play the best golf of your life right now. Thanks for tuning in today and I'll see you in a future episode. You could be hitting so much farther than you are right now, and there's one thing that stops 98% of golfers from getting maximum distance out of their driver, and it's so simple. When you make this little change today in this video, you are going to be hitting the ball much longer and accessing the full potential of your drives. So what we're looking at here is the takeaway and how you do your backswing. Your backswing is going to determine how you get the club into a good position to rake this ball in the downswing. So a lot of golfers think they need to swing the club straight back, right? And the club's going back in a straight line. And then what happens is they keep trying to swing straight back and they get their arms very high. Now this gets you in a really odd position where you can end up swinging over the top. And this is the distance killer. The club is moving over and down and it's going into the ground. It's almost impossible to hit your long clubs, one, straight, and two, you have zero distance. So if you want to maximize distance, you've got to get out of this high and over type of golf swing and go more into this lower and around. Now, I know that sounds crazy because you've all been taught to go more high with the arms in the backswing. But lower is gonna make life easier. Watch this, when I go lower and around, I've got my hands deeper and hands being deeper is going to help you get one, more power, and two, it's going to help you get the club on the proper path in the downswing. So the club stays behind me. It's not going over and down. It's gonna go launching into the ball at a high rate of speed like that. It's gonna get you a lot more power too because your body will work better. So how many of you out there, raise your hands, as you swing the club, straight back, you start getting your arms high, you start lifting your arms, you might struggle with a little bit of swaying because the natural reaction of going straight back is to sway because I'm disconnecting my arms from my body. So this starts to happen. I see this all the time. And then the golfer doesn't know what to do. They have to drop it down this way or they've got to loop the club this way to hit the ball with any measure of success. Now that's far too hard to coordinate when you got to hit a ball in one millisecond of time with any power. So when I get lower and around, I've got better connection to my arms against my body. And as I swing, because I'm going lower and around, it's going to naturally engage my hips. So I get more hip turn, that's a power source. And two, the hands being deeper in here, 
That's a power source. So I swing into the ball, that club is going right to the ball. It's the most direct path into impact. And it's gonna be right on the middle of the face. Solid is far. So how do we get the sensation of getting rid of higher arms in favor of this more around swing? Well, you gotta think about getting away from straight back. So a great feeling, and this one, it's, it's gold. You want to feel like you're getting your hands around your hips. And I know, I did this too a while ago. I used to be a lifter and a shifter. But for me to feel like I'm getting the hands in the correct position for more power and distance and accuracy, I've gotta feel the hands down here. So when I swing the hands low around the hips, I felt this, and what I saw was this. And I will never forget the first lesson I did this. When the instructor said, hey, you need to swing under a stick. He had a stick here. He said, go under it. I said, okay, that sounds crazy. And I'm here, and I'm like, oh, so weird, so awkward. He says, just hit it, just hit it. And I did, and the ball exploded. Here's a little example of taste of what happened that glorious day. So we got a little lower and around. And the ball just went with a little baby draw instead of that slice. So I'll never forget what happened that first lesson. I got all connected and I started swinging the club low and around, hips feeling. It was amazing what happened to the golf ball. Oh, that is destroyed. Versus the arms going way up and chopping down for one. This feeling is so powerless. I hate this feeling with the dryer. It's like, mm. whenever I see a golfer struggling with this problem, I feel, I really feel for you because it feels helpless. But the moment you stop feeling helpless is when you start going around. So lower hands, lower hands, and there it goes. And I barely swung at that. I'm just tapping, I hit the trees in the distance again. <laughs> I'm just tapping it. Don't get the idea that I'm trying to swing hard. Like I'm not, I don't feel like I'm swinging fast. The ball just explodes. That's the beauty of these power sources that I just showed you right here. The, the hips, the hands going more in, the better connection, the turn. Instead of all this disconnection, we've got connection and everything's good and working together. And what's working together, you're gonna hit fairways. Disconnecting is what ruins relationships. There it goes again. Oh my goodness, that was torched. I'm blaming the camera guys if that goes in that guy's yard. They said it was okay to film here. They said it was, they set me up here. <laughs> so getting the hands lower around the hips. You'll love it. Your friends are gonna hate it because they'll be the people 20 to 30 yards back when they see your ball is just going over them. And it's high and far and they're just jealous. So keeping it in. There it goes again, barely swinging. When we get the hands in, that's fantastic. Now, belt high hands is not the only piece that is going to save you here. There's another piece. This is a bonus piece because we've already fixed the backswing with the belt high hands. We fixed the downswing with the belt high hands. But if you really want the icing on the cake for this, you gotta get the shoulder down. And the reason why, if you want to hit the ball solid on the middle with most power possible, with the least amount of effort. We've gotta keep our body's relationship to the ball. So at setup here, I've got my spine tilt to the ground and to the ball. For me to strike the ball solid, I've gotta keep my spine's tilt. So as I swing back, I can't just swing the hands low and have a level turn. No, I'm gonna to top that ball. It's not gonna look good. There's a top. So it's not gonna work. But for me to get everything working right, I've gotta point my lead shoulder at the ball. So I think, Swing the club low and around, and my lead shoulder, my left shoulder at the ball to keep my tilt. You do that, you're gonna be bombing it. Just get up the tee, send it. You can do this tip right now, five minutes before your tee time, walk up the tee, your buddies are there, they're saying, oh, here's the short hitter, he's the short hitter, and then you nuke it over all their golf balls. In fact, they waited for you to hit last because they just wanted to see how much they outdrove you by, and meanwhile, you just get up and you're like, Ten, six, ten, watch this video. I watch this video and I get in. I'm gonna swing my hands lower. And then 
you flong it and it's gone. And your buddies are like, <coughs> one guy falls over, <laughs> he has a heart attack. So this is what's going on in the Segudo.golf online golf school, by the way. There's people literally doing this right now and their buddies are freaking out. Their buddies are crying because they're out driving their friends so much. One more nugget for good success, right? Because it sounds cool, it's more fun. The guy at the end of the range is gonna hate me because his house has the lights on. In fact, the lights may have just turned on. Hey, who keeps hitting the balls on my lawn? Oh, baby, oh, no, 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 sit, 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 sit. That didn't sound like window. It wasn't window. Maybe brick. Yeah, it was probably brick. <laughs> okay, swing the hands lower. Don't get the cops calling you. I'll see you on the next episode. <laughs>
And even when I start my downswing, I'm still feeling this as much as I can. I'm not changing it more. I'm not losing it. Never. Don't lose it. Keep it in. Here we go. Let's have some fun. Another good sounding strike. Kept the arm in and the ball just exploded down there towards my target. I love this because it's so simple. As humans, we overcomplicate the swing, but we don't have to. Keep the arm in and send it. Mm. Makes you want to hit more golf balls. Kind of got that golf addiction going. There it goes again. That's awesome. You're gonna love it. You're gonna be a new golfer because you went from elbow out to elbow in. And it's not gonna take weeks, it's gonna be instant. It's gonna be like five minutes and you're a new golfer. There it goes again. Whew. Doesn't get any better than that. Another place we're gonna see a huge benefit with this is with the woods and especially off the turf. You won't be chunking behind it or topping it. You'll be mashing it. Just keep it in. A lot of people with the woods get a little bit too over the top and they flip at it and the ball doesn't go where they want it to. So what you gotta do, just keep the elbow in. Never let it go. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Keep the elbow in and smoke it. That's what I'm talking about. That just sounded great. That was zero effort too. Zero. And it's a hero. Just like that Greek food, I love that stuff. Freshly cut mutton or veal, not mutton. Get the veal. Oh, that was, that was flonged. You just feel the, the club face collect the ball and explodes. And look, I'm getting a little bit of dirt there. So I'm hitting it right on El Centro of the club face. Whew. That is why we play golf. Doesn't get any better. In. You gotta be in to be in in the club. There it is again, same spot. Whew. Works with a driver too. Can't hit driver today. Driving range is kind of capped at 280 and I don't want to hit all these people over there. We don't want to call in that artillery strike. All right, send it. That was free feeling. You have more confidence in your swing too when you're doing this because you feel like you can go at it. Now I'm not trying to go rush into it. I'm just letting the swing happen. Shoulders back, shoulders through, and keep this glued in. Now that's what's going on in my online golf school, Seguro.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program that gets you doing this stuff shot after shot. Elbow is part of the equation, but there's a few other pieces you need to know to start building up this machine. This will get you started though. It's great. Keep it in and then send it. Oh my goodness, it does not get any better. Oh, sit down. Okay, thank goodness these are range balls. It's getting a little close to the people on the other side. So we're gonna put this down before the cops get called. And we're just gonna go back to my iron, yes. Whew. Back to the iron. <laughs> it's going down there and, oh, thank goodness it's a range ball. It's getting close though. All right, what are we doing again? We're keeping the elbow tucked in. Why? Because it's fun. Why? Because it makes golf worth playing. Golf is life. 
There we go. Oh. We could do this all day. You don't have to be a pro to start feeling that. You just have to tuck the elbow in. If I got my elbow out, you would not be seeing strikes like that. You'd be seeing duff central, just duff, duff, left, right, left, right. No, tuck it in, straight, 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 little baby draw, tons of power. So thanks for tuning in today. Get that arm tucked in. Check out segudo.golf. You'll start playing the best golf of your life right now in a simplified program, and I'll see you in a future episode. A lot of students will come up to me saying, I'm swinging really hard. I feel like I've got a lot of anger and angst on that golf ball, but the ball is going really short. How do you hit the ball far without doing a lot of effort? We need to understand this about the golf swing, that power is created on a circle, on an arc, and the golf swing is a circle. So when I tilt over to the golf ball, there's my tilted swing circle. For us to access truly effortless power, we just have to learn to maximize the power sources on the circle. So we start learning to swing the club inward in the golf swing, instead of trying to go all the way straight back forever and forever, because that'd be a literal straight line. So we're going more inward with the hands in the back swing. Another thing that we're going to do is we start getting the hips to turn more. So instead of shifting weight into the trail side, instead of moving linearly off the golf ball, we start learning to turn our hips. This is more angular power. Hip turn, that's a circle, that's an arc. So we start to maximize hip turn. And that looks like this leg straightening and this leg moving in towards the ball. Another thing you see with professional golfers. And then as I change that knee flex, I can get more shoulder turn, which gives me a lot more power. So I'm maximizing power sources in the golf swing. Let's look at what happens when we start adding these power sources to your golf swing. We're going to begin at a baseline of using none of those power sources first, and we'll build the speed into the swing as I add the other power sources. So this will be all hands and arms, no shoulders. I'm hitting it as good as I can with just using my hands and arms. I'm going to now start swinging the hands more inward, so more in this way around my body. Okay, there's a jump. <laughs> and what actually happened when I moved my hands in there is you really can't help it, but the hips do turn a little bit more and the shoulders start getting pulled more, so you start adding some of the other sources. Just keep that in mind. 180 yard, seven iron. That's up considerably in club head speed from 70 to 90. Effort level is the same. Just adding the hands in, good strike again. Club head speed consistently holding at about 90. Tour averages I think is 92 for a six iron. So seven iron, that would be really good seven iron. Once again, the speed, it's up 22 miles an hour just by adding inward component. Now let's add in the hip turn with the hands in. Now you'll see a change in my knee flex, a little bit more exaggerated change. I won't be so static with knees, I'm going to allow my knees to work. That felt like a much faster swing speed. 97.4, almost 30 from where I started, 70 miles an hour to almost 100. I could probably get it up to 100. The more I can turn my hips, the, more, the faster I could swing. That was my fastest swing. I chunked it a little bit, 105 miles an hour. That's a lot of swing speed that's in the hips. We're gonna take out the hips on this one. No hips, just watch the difference. Hands in only, 84 miles an hour. And I'm making the same effort swing. Nothing's changing, I'm just adding, adding pieces. Mm, that felt good. All right, so the last piece is to add those shoulders in. And I've really got a lot more shoulder turn now because when you swing the hands in, you allow the hips to turn more. That starts getting the shoulders turned more, but if I wanna maximize everything as much as I can go, which would be somewhere around here. And that would not be a stock shot for me. In fact, I never use that swing, but let's just see what happens. Okay, 98.1. So I squeezed about two miles out an hour more. Also quality of contact matters here. So if I don't hit it solid, it's not going anywhere. 
Look at the extension too through the shot. Maximum extension, 98.5. That was a radio station I used to listen to. 98.5, the peak. York's classic hits. There's a 100 mile an hour club head speed. So my control is down, but my speed is up. You can see the, my diminishing return. Okay, so we're getting it up to around that 100 mile an hour range just by adding everything I've got. Though you can see we've changed the club head speed from 70 with no power sources being used, none of the angular power sources being used, and then taking that up to 100 miles an hour by adding all the power sources. You would do this with all the clubs in the bag and you get your driver up, tremendous amount of club head speed, 20 to 30 more miles per hour. As you saw my change, that means that that change is possible for you too when you start maximizing these power sources. Another good swing. I show golfers all over the world how to do that in my online golf school, Segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you play the best golf of your life right now. Life is too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life right now with Segudo.golf. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you in a future episode. Hey there, Segudo golfers, Tom Segudo here. Today we're talking about freeing up your body so that you can hit the ball 50 extra yards without even trying. Basically an effortless golf swing. Swing easier, hit further. I see a lot of golfers, when they swing, it's like it's all arms and they're all cooped up here. Like, I'm stuck in a ball. I'm stuck, help. I'm in this walnut, I can't get out. So to get more power, we have to learn how to use the body. We need to go from cooped up to freed up. Do you see the difference there? Cooped up, freed up. Bigger turn, my hips are engaged, my body is going to be hitting the ball, which means that you can swing easier, you can hit further. And I was not joking when I said there's 50 yards in this, because the average golfer who opens up their body, they're going from this weak, really powerless effort to this huge, opened up, powerful golf swing. So what I want you to think about is the chest, the buttons on your shirt especially. When you're cooped up down here, where do your buttons point? Buttons are pointing down at the ground. Look at that. Buttons are staying down. While it's nice that you've got tilt to the ground, the buttons actually have to change to pointing at the sky. Look at this. Buttons up, buttons at the sky. I'm getting more extension in my swing, which unlocks your whole body to turn. Let's send one. Mmm, saucy push draw. Oh, that felt great. Did you see all that speed? I barely swung at the thing. Extension, let's do some more of that. That ball was absolutely nutted. Now we're standing here in the fairway, 280 plus yard drive. I've got a lob wedge into the green on a par four. Can you imagine what your game would look like if you were hitting short irons into every par four instead of that five iron or three wood or the five wood? It's really annoying. And plus you feel like you're working so hard. Extension is gonna give you that extra 50 yards you need to hit short clubs into the green. So from the front view here, when we look at extension, we look at getting more of this opening up of your body, the buttons up feeling. Well, from the front, watch. You see that the hips turn, the shoulders turn more when I extend. When I'm cooped up, the hips don't turn. The only thing that swings is the arms, and there goes my chopping at the golf ball, and it's really powerless. It's a lot of effort, but the ball doesn't go anywhere. We want to hit the ball farther with no effort. We want to swing easier, hit farther. So as we're swinging back, extension, is gonna make the swing feel nice and effortless. You're gonna be hitting short irons into every par four. Hmm, that was tasty. Be good. Oh, check it out, divot looks like a Snickers bar, a little nutty action in there. So all we're doing here is opening up the chest, getting you from being cooped up, bound up. It's like you ate all that cheese after the football party and you're stuck. If you were somebody who hit the driver 220, you could hit it 250, 
to 270 by opening up your body. If you've been closed up for a while, you might surprise yourself with how powerful this tip is. By the way, if you have any trouble hitting your longer clubs like your three iron, your three wood, especially the driver, this tip's really gonna help you out. I've got three iron here, buttons up, not cooped up. Buttons up, not bound up. By the way, I've got this free mini course, the top three keys you need to be a great ball striker. I highly recommend you check it out. It's going to show you how to hit the ball super crispy and far. Swing easier, hit farther, shot after shot. Also, comment below. Let me know what your yardage was before watching this video. And let me know if it improved your yardage. Tell us your new yardage in the comments section. Did you get 50 extra yards? Did you get 20, 30, 10? Any way I see it is an improvement. That's a ton more fun. It's now time for Miracle Shot, where Tom tries to hit an impossible shot from a nearly nice lie to an impossible location. Let's see what happens. We're gonna start with a fade, hit a nice draw. Tell me, what shot would you hit? Try and shape it around this tree. Can we draw this ball? Not very likely. Let's try it though, for fun. This is a huge hook, high draw. Oh, baby. Be good. No way. <laughs> that was insane. I was in jail there. Buttons to the sky. Let it fly. Mm. Oh, she's flying. She's flying. Stay. Sit, 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 sit. Woo. What did I say? You can hit some shots that are pretty spicy when you start extending your spine. That ball was nuked. I really want you to get this feel. And some of you might be having a hard time opening up your body for the first time because you've been so cooped up and bound up in this position forever. So let's dip the club. Let's get rid of it. Just got your two arms. Other thing that's really important with this is keeping the arms straight. Feeling like both arms are really extended. It's gonna help you open up your body more. So you've got your arms extended out like this. Now imagine somebody has just told you that they want you to get the cereal box out of the top cabinet because nobody else can reach it. You know that feeling of, oh, oh, oh. Okay, so that's the feeling. We're gonna stretch our body way up. So you got your body fully extended. This is spine extension. You actually extend your spine fully like this in the golf swing when you hit it. If you wanna hit it really far, you would do this the longest hitters extend the most. So I'm reaching up for the top cereal box way up there. Your body should feel really free. That's extension, that's happening here. By the way, do you feel how the buttons are now facing up, not down? Buttons are up because I'm extending my spine. With the club, it's the same thing. That's what's getting the buttons up. You're reaching for the sky. You're extending your spine. You're getting that cereal box. It's gonna help you hit the ball so much more solid. Not to mention 50 yards further. Good strike. Let's see if we can fade it in there too. Ooh, almost a perfect fade. That was really solid. Nice shot. You can get that kind of command over your ball flight and have that kind of crispy contact shot after shot when you join the Segudo.golf online golf school. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to help you play the best golf of your life. Life's far too short to play bad golf, so what are you doing? Wasting your time playing bad golf. Get on the gravy train to playing great golf with Segudo.golf. Got a link here in the description and also here below in the video. So check it out. There's nothing quite like freeing your body up to hit a golf shot like that. The feeling of swinging easier and hitting the ball further is so addicting because it's like you're barely lifting a feather and the ball's exploding off the face. You can do that when you open up your chest like that. 
you reach for the top cereal box. I know you're gonna go home right now and start putting all your cereal boxes on the top shelf. You're gonna start reaching up and practicing your extension at breakfast in the morning. Hey, comment if you're gonna do that. Then I know you're really dedicated to getting 50 extra yards with no effort, basically not trying. You want some more of that? Get your chest opened up. Mm. Oh, that's perfect. Reach for the stars and you'll land among the moon, hitting it 50 extra yards further. I'll be right. Be the right club. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, get in there, get in there. Oh! Man, that's fun. Whoosh! Whoosh! There we are again, a nice perfect patch, crispy KFC divot, order a number seven. Three piece chicken mashed potatoes, 170 yards, seven iron, sitting on the green with the birdie pot. Woohoo! All right, so good old golfers. Thanks for tuning in today. If you're looking for a way to play your best golf right now, check out my online golf school, segudo.golf. And I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. If you like this video, like the channel, subscribe. There's a whole party going on right here. See you next week. Hitting the center of the club face, one of the most satisfying feelings in golf. And today, I'm going to teach you how to get that feeling shot after shot with a very simple swing thought. So when we think about consistent golf swings, what comes to mind? Well, you might think of Ben Hogan, just striping the ball effortlessly down the range. You might think of Tiger Woods. You might think of a tour player, all those great ball strikers. And one thing that helps great ball strikers have a consistent swing is this. They've all got a backswing path and a downswing path that looks really the same. It's pretty much the same back and through. And if you can get your path to be consistent in your swing, you'll be consistent. Seriously, when you hear these two things, you'll probably laugh at how simple they are, and then you'll say, whoa, when you try it with your golf swing. First thing is this. Get your arms straight. With our arms straight, we're eliminating variables. So by getting your arms straight, you now allow the bigger muscles to control the swing. Instead of just the hands and arms going wherever, ninjing, bigger muscles allow the shoulders and body to work. You want to use the biggest muscle possible because that eliminates the need for you to control so many pieces. Whenever you try and control pieces, things go bad. We're human, that's what happens. It's just a fact of life. Simple equals better, easier for you. So arms straight, get them out in front of you. Make sure you get your elbows together. That's a great feeling. Now we've got a unit we're creating. Your shoulders, arms, and hands are now a unit. Next, and this is really going to blow your mind, connect the arms to your body. So we're building this robot, this machine that you will become. If we get our arms connected, like I've got my elbows together, now we need to connect both these arms to the sides of your pecs, sort of resting on top and to the side of your pecs, and they're glued in there. I just took some Gorilla Glue. And just imagine, I dropped them right here on your arms, and you're just whoosh, stuck with your arms straight, your elbows together. Now what? What do we do? Well, I'd say at this point, let's go out and get a sandwich together like this. People won't judge you, trust me. If you're a golfer, you'll understand. So now I've got this unit with this Gorilla Glue, and I can't unstick myself. I'm, I'm stuck here. What am I going to do? How do I move the club? This is the magic moment. You have to move the club with the body. You can't have any independent controllers. No variables. Now I've got to use the big muscle, the torso, to move the club. What does that mean? One path every single time for every swing. It's the consistency booster for you. Oh, I got a fire ant in my club. That's not going to be good. Hey, buddy. Buddy, this isn't going to work. Now that you've got this feeling of the big muscles in control, 
we need to get this with the club in our hands. So as I swing back, I've got the same feeling, elbows together, really connected, boom. I have to use my torso to move this club. You might be sensing a whole new world of body turn, more freedom with your body. You're also sensing that the club's tracing one path back, one path through. Something that is magical is that when you get to the top of your backswing, we won't have any of this flying away. We'll actually be glued in here. And that's a huge backswing consistency key. This is money for your golf swing. It's free money, it's right there. So let's make a few swings. We'll start off nice and small. Got our chest in control, elbows together, arms straight, really connected. I'm glued, I am glued in. We're ready to take off to the moon here. And as you make short chips, you'll find the club's moving because of, that's right, the body. We're not just pulling the arms back. It's the torso, it's the chest. Nice and solid. You should find you're hitting the center of the club. Start there, hit the center of the club with the ball. Don't move up until you've done that nine out of 10, 10 out of 10 times. Then we'll kick it up a notch. What do we do? We just keep moving this torso. And if you really want to know how to get these moves down exactly, I've got a free mini course the top three keys, you need to be a great ball striker. It's at go.segudo.golf. Check it out in the link and comments below. We'll keep this torso moving more and more and more and more and more until we get to a full golf swing and I'm still connected. So we're going to go back further and let it fly. Get that feeling of what it's like to have the body in control and get this connection. The connection, it's essential for consistency. Swinging back. Mm. Oh, did you hear that? It just sounds like a crack in the distance. It's a great sound hitting right there every single time. Another really solid strike on the center of the club right there. And it's the same swing almost every single time. You know, it's the closest you'll get to being a golfing robot. We need to eliminate variables to have the same swing every time. So by getting our arms straight and connecting our upper arms to our sides, allow the body to swing the club, which gives you one path back and one path through for extreme consistency. Extreme meaning you'll have a lot more fun, you'll play a lot more golf, and my favorite part, birdies, pars, this crispy, addicting feeling time and time again. Does it work with the driver? Oh yeah. Another good shot right there. And it feels effortless. Why? The body's in charge. Your body is telling the club what to do. I don't like having to work so hard. This makes the golf swing so much easier. So here we go again. Oh, ball, what are you doing? There we go. It's okay, you'll be fine. Oh, somebody doesn't want to get hit today. Somebody doesn't want to get hit today. Let's swing before you can get off the tee. Oh, I lost a little connection there. Thanks, top flight. Good shot right there, too, on the center of the club. Top flight won't escape me that time. So you know what to do, get connected, keep those arms straight. If you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life right now, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program that will teach you step-by-step step how to build your swing to hit shot after shot crispy. Life is far too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life with segudo.golf. Thanks for watching, have an awesome week. There's a great chance that by the time this episode is over, you're going to outdrive all of your friends in your next game and they're gonna be blown away. I've got a really awesome tip for you today that will get you mashing the golf ball. And it's all about creating a ton of speed with zero effort. How do we do that? Well, one of the ways we can do that 
is we can get more, what a lot of people know, lag in the golf swing. We have the club lagging behind us in the downswing, so the club can whip through the golf ball at the last possible second, send that ball to the moon, and back, it's like atomic power. I've got a fantastic drill that you can do from anywhere. If you got a wall, you can do this drill. It's gonna teach us to feel lag. You see a lot of golfers struggling with this concept, where they might have a good start to downswing, but then the power gets thrown away early, and this is that big problem of flipping, and falling back, early extension. The power is being thrown away early. But we have a huge power source in your trail arm. If you're right-handed, it's your right arm. And when it's folded, it's loaded like this, it is storing a huge amount of power. Just think about this arm as being a power gold mine. And if you can load this arm and then have it fire, after impact, that's the best case situation. You don't want it firing early, you want it firing late. All power and the most speeds happening right there. The wall drill is a great way to feel this staying loaded longer. Just a little disclaimer, this drill could change your life. Just be advised. So, we've got a wall at home, I've got my net right here. Something that's a hard surface that goes down to the floor ideally. You can't throw away your power with the wall drill. Place your body about a couple feet away from the wall, so I'm like two to three feet. If you do it closer, you're gonna feel the lag a lot more. If you do it further away, you're not gonna feel it. So you gotta be close enough. I'd rather have you on the closer side. Place your club at the top of backswing, and then start your downswing to the point where the club's about here. So you're touching the wall with the club. This is the magic point where it's gonna change your life. You want the club head to stay on the wall. So as you swing down, look at that. It's forcing me to feel stored power. You might feel that this arm hasn't started getting straight at all. It's staying really folded longer. If I get even closer to the wall, check this out. More stored power. So if you have a hard time with keeping power in your golf swing, you want to stand close to this wall and have that club head dragging down the wall. Now don't go around drawing stuff on your walls. I mean, you can play some foam or whatever just so you don't damage your wall. You can do this with an alignment stick even. But as long as you keep the stick, the club, whatever it is on this wall as you swing into the ball, you're gonna get this club in a beautiful position to deliver and to impact with insane power. Just dragging it down. Do this about five to 10 times. Whew. Look at that, the positioning is just incredible. The, the stored power, I can feel it. It's incredible. There's no more casting, flipping, throwing away. No, we're saving that, remember? Into here and then whew, it's all gonna explode. Atomic power, effortless power. I'm not working for that, you're just storing it up to explode into the ball. Then we make swings. After you've done about five or 10, just rehearse one without the wall. Imagine the wall's there. Ooh, that's a good feeling. I was, in, I was sitting in my chair the other day, I was like, this, this is just a great idea. I think this will be so much fun for you guys, dragging this club along the wall. Wow. And then, then you can feel the explosion of power. I'm dragging it along the wall and whoosh, whack, crack. Explosion, KFC. All right, we got my imaginary wall here. Now I'm going to envision this as I do a practice swing. Just a soft swing where I hit this ball. Go to the top of your backswing. Up, I'm against the wall now. Drag that club along the wall into here. You'll see that this angle doesn't change. This arm stays folded longer. Just keep it folded. Then, that's when we hit the ball. So we are training the feeling of keeping the power into here and then hitting and getting the feeling of that power releasing through the ball. It's really odd at first. It's very weird feeling at first because you might be used to throwing away your power early. Don't worry if you're hitting these shots good or bad, it's just the feeling we need to build. Okay? And once you've done that feeling, you've got an idea of what it's like to keep this arm bent while this arm's staying straight, keeping this angle between the club and the arm. Then we're going to hit a shot nice and slow, 
feeling that wall, stay against the wall, stay against the wall, release all the power through the shot. Really slowly here. Okay, that feels good. I can really feel like the club head is lagging behind, like the trail arm is storing power. Hit another shot. Really solid, easy, effortless power. By the way, I've got a free mini course, go.segudo.golf, that shows you the top three keys you need to be a great ball striker. Check it out in the link in comments below. Look at this stuff. We store up all this power, and then it's like the club just whoosh, cracks through the ball, whips through the ball, high velocity. I'm not even putting a lot of effort into it. And we're putting marks right here on the center of the face, white marks. That's golf ball indents. That's when you're really compressing it and it's about four grooves up. So that's really good feeling. That's why we play golf. I want that feeling the rest of my life. I know you want that feeling, so we can get that feeling. Now, if you don't have a wall or you wanna train this anywhere, I highly recommend checking out the Lag Shot Swing Trainer. You've seen this in a few episodes already. I think this thing is one of the best trainers on the market, and here's why. It takes care of the whole wall concept for you. Because it's such a heavy weighted club and the shaft is whippy, whippy as I swing through, it forces the club to stay on the wall this way. Watch this practice swing. We'll do it in slow motion after I do fast. You can see that's really forcing that club head to lag like this, storing power and then whoosh, releasing all that power. And it happens naturally. I don't have to think about training this swing. This swing trainer trains me, teaches me. That's why it's so powerful. And Segudo Golfers, you can get a 15% off discount on this. Just check out the link in comments description below. Use code Segudo Golf. It'll really help you to get this feeling. And so many other golf swing feelings. You see me use it in a lot of episodes now. The beauty of this trainer is that it will teach you to keep the power longer. So if I throw away the power early, I feel this weight of the club head whipping down and going into the ground. And it's a really ugly feeling. It doesn't feel like the club's getting through the ball. So when you do practice swings with this, you want the club head to take a divot on the front side of the ball and then whip through. And if I can feel divots on the front side instead of the back side, I know that this club is lagging behind me at the right speed, the right time, delivering power at the right time. So I'm not thinking about it, it just happens. What about the driver? Do we do the same thing with the driver? Well, yes. Actually, that's the beauty of this lag shot is they got a driver model as well. And you'll get the same wall-like feeling with the lag shot. So as I swing back, feeling this club head staying along the wall, dragging along that wall, look at that. And then last second, whoosh, whi whipping all that power through. Whoosh. It's easier for me to do with two hands. I really feel that club head lagging behind me. You cannot throw away the power with the lag shot. Lag shot helps you keep the power, automatically teaches you how to get the club through the ball with tons of speed. And after I've done that a few times with either iron or driver, I'm gonna kick it up with the real club. And I want the same feeling. The feeling doesn't change. It's just a matter of whether you use the wall or the lag shot. Either works really well. Lag shot's easier because it just teaches you without a wall. You can do it anywhere. And as I swing, imagining the wall. I'm never throwing away the power early. Mm. That feels great. I feel like the club just gets through the ball so much faster after doing a few swings with that lag shot. Like the club just whoosh, whoosh. That feels great. This is why we play golf. Because we hit crispy golf shots. Woo! That was smoking. So what are we doing? The wall drill. How many times do it? As much as we need to keep all the power going through the shot. Hold the club against the wall. The club will explode through the ball. Effortless power. Great ball striking. If you're looking for a way to play your best golf right now, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program. 
that will build your golf swing to hit crispy golf shots like that every single time. Thanks for tuning in today, and I look forward to seeing you in a future episode. Remember, life is far too short to play bad golf. So get on the track to playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. Oh yeah, so crispy. All right, Segudo golfers, today I'm gonna show you how to do that with your seven iron. Whether this means you're hitting your seven iron 130 and you wanna get it to 150, or you're hitting it 170 and you wanna get it to 180, it doesn't matter. Today's swing thought is going to help you improve your ball striking. When we look at what makes a consistent golf swing, there's a couple of things that come to mind. The first thing is staying centered over the golf ball. So keeping your head in place. As I swing, I'm trying to keep my head from going forward or backward, keeping it in the same spot. That allows me to hit the ball very solid, shot after shot. Right there's another mashed seven iron. Wow. That is nuclear. The second thing we have to do, aside from getting that consistent contact point, we need to keep our body's relationship to the ball in the golf swing. If I want to hit the ball in the center of the club face, which leads to good crispy off awesomeness with your ball striking. So we set up a good relationship to the ball here. I need to keep that relationship to the ball throughout the swing. So how do we do that? Well, we need to introduce an element of tilting tilting our spine. So the way we're going to think about this is as if your body, your spine is like a pendulum swinging back and forth. So the spine is tilting toward the target, away from the target. You'll be amazed at how this gets the club moving really fast with almost no effort. So as I tilt my spine towards the target, I need to keep my head in place. That's the biggest key. So tilting towards the target, head in place, tilting away from the target, head in place. There's the golf swing. And I barely thought about positions. I didn't think about where to move the club. All the movements were taken care of by simply tilting and keeping my head in place. So to get an idea of what spine tilt's like, just take your arms, extend them out, and bend them, bank your airplane here, towards the target. And then also away from the target. So that's tilt. It's a necessary element of great ball striking. If I focus on tilt while keeping this head in place, I'm gonna hit a solid golf shot. A little thin right there, but it didn't hurt. Still went about 180. Not a lot of effort. Carrying it 180, swing speed is up in the 90s. All coming from using my body as the power source, my head staying in place as a contact source. Really good contact keeping the head in place. Ooh, that was probably one of the best ones. Whew. Getting it up there into the near 190s. Club head speed, 95. The tilt with the head in place is loading up a ton of power potential with my body. And as I tilt back the other direction, it's like it slings that club through the impact zone at a high rate of speed. And it's natural speed. We're using momentum here. The momentum in your tilt. So if you're just getting into tilt for the first time, it's a really good place to start with you trying to lean towards the target in the backswing, lean away from the target in the downswing, but imagining your body as a pendulum. Awesome strike right there. Right on the center of the club face. I'm finding the center of the club face because I'm keeping my body's tilt to the ground. I haven't changed it. There's my tilt to the ground with my spine. By the time I get to the top of my backswing, I'm keeping that same tilt. Even though I'm leaning towards the target, my tilt from this view is still the same. Then in the downswing, as I tilt away, it's helping me keep my body's relationship to the ground even more. And once I return that club to impact, it's going to be on the center every time. Problems come in when you lose your tilt. If for some reason I go back and I start gradually losing my spine tilt, 
or even going too much in the tilt direction, that's when you see ball striking inconsistencies develop. So the most consistent path for you is to keep your head in place as you tilt. Another good strike. That might go in the hole. Not as much carry as the other ones, but you know, I'll take 180 yards seven iron any day. This is a lot of fun too, because I'm not doing a lot of thinking. Not a whole lot of thinking, just executing. Good strike. Beautiful push draw right there. That's what you want with your life. By the way, I've got a free mini course, go.segudo.golf, that'll show you the top three keys you need to be a great ball striker. Tilt is a very important key. There's a couple of other keys that you need as well to help you get more power and consistency. Just check it out in the link in the comments and description below. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. 193.4. That was a very solid strike. When you think about your current golf swing where you're at right now with your ball striking, if you're finding that your ball striking isn't as consistent, meaning you're not taking a divot in front of the ball almost every single time, I mean you're hitting some fat shots, some thin shots, a lot of times it can be traced back to tilt. You can see what happens when you lose your tilt. Problems happen. Not fun golf happens. Life's too short to be playing bad golf. So we've got to learn how to play good golf while we're here on this planet. And this is one of the best ways to do that. And as you're seeing here with the launch monitor, it's a very solid strike. Mm. Ooh. That was even better than the last one. I'm really loving that. Right on the center of the face, not a whole lot of effort, ball exploding off the face. So it's a good old golfers, you know what to do, get out there, pretend you're a pendulum, but while you're doing that, keep your head in place. So as you tilt, you'll find that other parts of your golf swing will open up like more turn, and then that's gonna keep you centered, mashing the ball all day long. If you're looking for a way to play the best golf of your life, check out my website, segudo.golf. It's a complete structured golf swing training program that will teach you how to play the best golf of your life right now. As I said, life is too short to play bad golf. So start playing the best golf of your life with segudo.golf. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future episode. I want to take your golf swing to the next level, and this tip right here is going to do that. A lot of golfers in the golf swing will pick the club up with their hands and arms like this. And in the downswing, they chop down. So it looks like you're out there and just doing this with lumberjack, you're splitting wood in the woods, your ball's going off the planet. Life's not really fun because golf is life. So to make golf more fun, which makes life more fun, we need to get away from picking this club up and making your swing all hands and arms, all of that which is very inconsistent, and get it into being more of a body swing. Getting away from the picking the club up and turning to something that looks a lot fuller, a lot better. And some of you might be thinking, well, I can't get there because my body won't let me get there. Trust me, your body's designed to get to that position if you let it. So let's go to that pickup position that a lot of you are struggling with. And I see this a ton of time in lessons. It's almost everywhere on every driving range. Go look for it. You'll see it looks like this. The club just gets picked up like this. It's hopeless. Flip and pick up. Pick up and flip. That's the worst pickup line I've ever heard. If you want to really love this golf ball, if you want to really smash it, you've got to allow the shoulders to do the job. So picking the club up is no shoulders. You can, see, you can even see it right here. My left shoulder barely moves when I pick up the club. It just stays right here. But if you want to transform your ball striking right now, you've got to get this shoulder moving that way, across the chest. Whew. That's the difference between you being inconsistent, powerful, and it's such a slight difference. How do we feel the shoulders? Well, 
you got to get used to the feeling of this whole unit working together. So to feel the shoulders, I like the idea of extending the arms straight off the body, like this. My arms are perfectly straight, kind of like I'm pushing up against a wall. And I want to keep the arms straight like that, but swing them back so that they point at the camera. So when I do this, I'm putting my hands at you. Stop in the name of the law. When I'm doing this, my shoulder is moving across the chest. And even this shoulder is moving behind me. See, pickup world, pickup sticks don't work. There's no turn. And it drives me crazy when I see this because you got all this potential right there. Bring that shoulder behind you. Bring the shoulder across the chest. I feel my body engaging now. I don't feel like my swing is just one giant pick up and drop and it's really powerless. Every golfer will improve from this. You need this to play great golf. You need those shoulders to move like that. If you want consistency, they have to move this way. Of course, you're tilted over, so this shoulder moves more down. But either case, the shoulders are moving now instead of pick up. Inconsistent, consistent. You choose which one you want. And my bet is on you want to be consistent because that's why you're on YouTube looking up golf tips. So I want to take this same feeling to the golf ball. And we do that holding the club out in front of us like this. We can rehearse this really well. Just swing the club back while keeping both arms fully extended. That is a shoulder turn right there. That is majestic. No, not picking it up. Don't do this. I see you. I know you're out there. One of you out there is doing this right now, picking it up. Oh, that's my turn. Watch this shoulder. You need to see a mirror. Go to a mirror. Just look at this. Look at this shoulder. If it doesn't move, you're picking up sticks. <laughs> if it moves, your shoulder is working. Pick up sticks. Squirrel. Shoulder working, beauty, perfection, great golf shots. Then I'm gonna hit a shot with that feeling. Get those shoulders working. There it is. Mm. Keep the smile on your face because you know why. Right in the center. Right on the center. Now what do we do? Most of you know what I'm going to say next. We hit it again. Why? Because it felt good. That was crispy KFC on the center of the face. Deep fried chicken. Whew. So, shoulders. There it is again. Really simple, really powerful. Just for giggles. Let me pick one up for a second just to show you the difference. My goodness, I'll never do that again. I don't know how you swing like that. Why would you do that? It's just miserable. That's okay. You've gotten out of that habit right here. You're in a new land. By the way, I've got a free mini course. The top three keys you need to be a great ball striker. Go.sugudo.golf. Check it out. It'll show you how to do this shot after shot. Mm, easy, effortless mashed potatoes, center of the club face. Okay, so same with the driver? Yes, and with the driver, it's even more important that you do this because you're gonna get that temptation. That little golf swing devil's gonna come and say, hey, 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 how about you pick that club up on that next swing? I know you're doing great with the irons, but why don't you pick that club up on the next swing? And you're saying, why? I don't wanna do that. And then, then it's gonna convince you on the next hole to pick the club up with the driver, and you're gonna slice it off the planet, and you're gonna say, why'd you do that? I got my shoulders. My shoulders turning. All right. So it's even more imperative that you get your shoulders working with the big dog, the D driver, because if you pick up at all with this club, you are looking at your boat at the bottom of the ocean, your ball at the bottom of the ocean. Same thing. Get a little wider here with your hands so you can really feel these shoulders. Whoop. It's a longer club, but it's still the same shoulder move. Still the same shoulder move. 
Watch this. There, that shoulder moving across the chest. Right there. Never stopping. It's an athletic move. It's one you need. And then we're going to swing. Dang, that was spanked. Whoosh. Actually heard a crack. Whoosh. That full shoulder move. No picking up going there. No pickup sticks. This is just lighting the candle all day long. Here we go again. Complete it. Wow. Good thing there's a net there. That would have really done some serious damage in somebody's backyard. So, Segudo golfers, don't pick the club up, but rather shoulders. Let the shoulders do the work. Picking up is disaster. Shoulders is money. If you want to play the best golf of your life, check out my website, Segudo.golf. It's a complete golf swing training program designed to build your swing to hit shot after shot crispy, just like that. Life is too short to play bad golf, so get on the track to playing the best golf of your life with Segudo.golf. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future episode. I'm just gonna do what? I'm gonna go buttons to the sky, okay. And then you're gonna launch one. You're just gonna send it. A tip that really changed how I struck the golf ball was learning to use my body more in the golf swing. I used to be an all arms type of golfer. My swing would go back to about here and stop. And then I'd try and reach for more and I'd break down my arms. But this only led to the dreaded slice, chunking behind the ball, thins, tops, all those inconsistent shots that you don't wanna see anymore. But changing from that and going to a more of a body swing I was able to see a huge gain in distance, I eliminated my slice problem, and I dropped tons of shots off my scorecard. So I'll get a lot of golfers to come up to me and say, Tom, I can't keep my arms straight. I'm having trouble striking the ball well. And almost every one of these swings involves zero body. It's all arms. So it's no wonder why in your golf swing you're feeling so stuck. Golfers who swing all arms, without the body in the way, it looks something like this. There's no way my hips are going to move. There's no way my body's going to turn through the shot. So if you're feeling stuck in the golf swing like you can't turn, you need to start learning how to open your body up. There's so much more speed there. I'm gonna hit a shot using all arms, and then I'm gonna hit a shot using all body. And you can see the difference. All arms right here. Okay, that's a clean strike. Ball went about 120, 150 yards. Okay. It's playable. It's not going to hurt me on the golf course, but I'm stuck there. I'm limited to 120, 150 yards. Plus that felt like a lot of effort. I'm gonna use my body now. I'm gonna let my body turn more. And I'm going to do it in such a way that it's effortless and natural. I'm not forcing my body in positions it shouldn't be. So here we go. Here comes more of a body swing. Mm. Wow. Okay, right away, higher, farther, and it just waved at that short one I just hit, the first one. It waved at the all arms swing as it was passing over it, 20 or 30 more yards. That was like 170 or 180, explosive. Also felt like it was easy on my body. So how do we get away from all arms and start learning how to use the body? Your shirt buttons have the answer. We're going to point the buttons at the sky. Before we even talk about doing body stuff, what should be feeling in a body swing versus an arm swing? Because they can be quite similar. Well, an arm swing is effectively that, all arms. It means no hips. So I'm stuck here, usually it means a hip sway. It means less shoulder turn. Look at my shoulder here. It doesn't even move, it barely moves under my chin. So the club can't travel that far unless I want to break down my arms. When I think about buttons to the sky though, automatically point my buttons up towards that tree. My shoulders under my chin, my hips have turned 45 degrees. So now I've given myself two more power sources. 
huge ones by the way, power sources that are going to launch that ball farther to the target, soaring over your old all-arm swing. Buttons to the sky. It's a clear winner, the ball just keeps going versus that arm swing with the buttons. You want to imagine that there's a device attached to your shirt here and you're trying to point it at the sky. It could feel weird at first. You might feel a couple different things. If you're coming from an all arm swing to a body swing, it could feel like you're losing control in the sense that your body's in all these new positions. You've got all this room to swing now. I know the first time I went to a body swing, I was like, oh my, I feel like I'm going to fall over. My body felt weird because it was all in positions I'd never been before. Having the hips turning, that's new territory. Having the shoulders turning this much, that's new territory. So get comfortable with knowing that your swing will feel a lot more opened up if you're turning correctly. So here's another button to the sky example. We'll start nice and slow. And when I do this, I want to allow my hips to turn, so I'm straightening my trail leg. And I want to see my shoulder under my chin, my lead shoulder going under my chin. Feeling buttons to the sky is getting that to happen. Let's do a little three-quarter half swing type shot here. And you should be feeling hips turning, shoulders turning. What I love about it is you don't have to think about where the club goes. You know how you think about backswing and downswing and maybe there's 15 million thoughts in your head about all the positions you need to hit? When I go buttons to the sky, take away, top of backswing, I start down, downswing. Buttons to the sky is going to set you up to hit all of the positions. So you don't have to worry about getting your calculator out and your drawing board and trying to calculate how and where to put the club. All you need to do is think buttons to the sky. When you're out on the course, you get to the first tee, you say, okay, Tom, I'm over the ball. I'm just going to do what? I'm going to go buttons to the sky. Okay. And then you're going to launch one. You're just going to send it and you're going to love it because the ball is exploding off the face. How's this doing for your ball striking? You liking the buttons to the sky feeling? If you're out in the range right now trying this out, let me know in the comments below. Is it a lot more fun when you're doing buttons to the sky? Because I know it's a lot more fun when I'm swinging with my body instead of my arms. That is so pure. The sound is different than if you're that arm swinging person. You'll start hearing a sound that makes you think you're on TV. That's what makes golf fun. That's the sound I've been searching for. So I'm getting my turn here. I feel my hips. My belt buckle is pointing more away from the camera. Instead of the all arm swing where it's pointing at the camera, you're stuck. I like it to this. You're either stuck or you're unstuck. Stuck meaning the body doesn't move. You're a rock. You're, you're frozen. And you're saying, oh, I got to go to the gym. I got to stretch more to figure out my flexibility. No. I'm routinely teaching 75 year old and older golfers how to get the same amount of turn that I've got right here. Why? How do 75 year olds get this amount of turn? Well, it's because your body's designed to work this way. We're not doing a resistance swing. We're not fighting our body. We're not doing the whole Will Zalatoris thing, you know, that destroyed his back, where he's flexing his leg. We're opening up. Oh, angelic voices. Oh, feels so good. Feel like you're swinging in a hot tub. It's easy, it's relaxed. Just point your chest to the sky. And when you do that, oh my goodness, my hips have turned, my shoulders have turned. I, I didn't think. I just want buttons to the sky and I stare at the sun, and then I hit a shot. And the ball just flies. That's what's going on in my Segudo.golf online golf school. It's a training program designed to build your swing so you can do this shot after shot. You don't have to think a whole lot about it. Step by step, golfers go through it. They learn the basics of creating consistent contact with the golf ball, shot after shot. They learn how to add power to the swing without hurting your body, body friendly power, so you can swing all day long with plenty of power. That's buttons to the sky. That's the sound you want. You see how easy that is? And lastly, they're learning how to hit the ball straight. What else do you want with life? We just want to be able to feel a pro like golf shot all the time. We hit the shot that keeps us coming back all day long. That's the goal. You can do that when you start going for a body swing. Mm. Zero effort. Okay, I'll lie. I lied. If 
5% effort. The only effort was me moving my body. Buttons to the sky, I'm gonna go real easy. Real easy. It's still going. It's still going. When you do body, you also feel like you're in control of your tempo. You feel the rhythm of your swing a lot better. You don't feel like you're rushing your swing. I know a lot of you out there are rushing your swing. Buttons to the sky. Do buttons to the sky really slowly. I can't fathom the effortlessness of this buttons to the sky feeling. You're going to have a party on the golf course doing this. Your friends are saying, hey, can we come to the party? And you're going to say, hey, I watched this Segudo golf video. Watch it, and then I'll, I might invite you to my party. But this is really a lot of fun right now. Hit him. Hit him. Oh! If he didn't turn a little to the right, I would have hit that range, dude. Golf is more fun when you're doing this. Divots. Buttons to the sky. There it goes again. Oh. You'll feel like you're in a rhythm. And then you'll be able to do it again and again and again and again. Change your swing to body. Get out of the arms concept. You're going to have a whole lot more fun. Thanks for watching today, and I'll see you in a future episode. Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here, coming to you from the Tradition Club driving range in beautiful Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And today we're talking about something that's rather revolutionary. It goes probably against the grain of what you've been told. But getting the hands lower at the top of the backswing might be the best kept secret for you when you go out and play golf your next round. If you can lower your hands by three inches at the top of your backswing, you'll pick up 30 more yards and be a ton more consistent. Let's look at why that is. So if you're one of the golfers who's out there thinking you need to lift your arms, you might be struggling with some inconsistency. And here's why. Getting the arms higher at the top of the backswing feels powerful. But if you look at what you need to do to get your club into a good position in the downswing, well, this is what has to happen. Great ball striking happens here in the downswing. The club head behind the hands. If you don't get your club head behind the hands, let's say the club gets more out over in front of you here. It's out in front of the hands. It goes down and across. There's the slice in the woods. There's playing golf from the woods instead of playing golf from the fairway. Powerless, not fun golf happens when the club gets out in front of the hands. Well, if you need to get to here in the downswing, that means that if you lift the club, you then have to drop the club lower and hit the ball. And no matter how you want to shake this up, meaning if you turn your hips and drop the club, or if you don't turn your hips and drop the club, whatever you're doing, you still have to get the club there, which takes a ton of timing, a ton of work, and there's almost no benefit to you doing that. It places a lot more stress on the body. Working with your body, making life a lot easier, instead of having that inconsistent lift, drop, hit thing going on, which I don't have enough time to work on that. Been there, done that. It's too hard. If you think about taking your hands from up here and going three inches lower, or if you're here, go three inches lower, you're gonna see more distance the lower you go, assuming you keep your body's tilt to the ground. And this is a huge key. How do you think Ben Hogan, at like five foot eight, smashed the ball past a ton of people who were way taller, way stronger than him. He took advantage of this concept right here. Getting the club more in behind him and getting the club easily set here in the downswing. The less work you got to do here, the more you can focus on hitting the ball hard the right way. So how do we get the club to go from up here and stop dropping and stop hitting like that? You've got to focus on changing the path of the club. This will change how you feel the golf swing. But once you start hitting the ball and seeing the ball rocket off the face, way down range, you're never gonna go back to lifting your arms. Just place a stick right here, tilted angle. If you're a lifter and you're used to taking the club, what, straight back up the line and lifting, and then you gotta drop and hit, well, we're not looping this time, we're not doing that. You're just gonna swing under the stick and then keep it under the stick on the way down. Now what I'm gonna do is make a swing just not touching the stick. And it feels crazy if you've never done this before. It feels really low. And it felt crazy for me too when I started working on this because I was also way up here with my elbow flying away, arms very high, and then the downswing just started this way. That's a lot of dropping. As I swing back, slowly feeling that club under the stick and then downswing club under the stick, I can get a predictable backswing position and also a good downswing position. 
This stick feels very intimidating, by the way. And you should imagine that it's got electricity in it, so that if you touch it, you get shocked. Oh, shoot. That hurts. That was a much lower hands backswing. Now, for somebody like me who's used to getting the club lower and around, I really don't need to work on getting the club more low and around. There's a range you need to be in. And that range happens to be where the lead arm is on the shoulder line, slightly under the shoulder line. So if I go too low, I get in trouble, and you would get in trouble too. The whole idea here is going three inches lower. Bonus points if you're a high lifter and you go five to seven inches lower to where it needs to be. Big bonus points. You will see huge returns with much more distance, much more consistency. Just by getting those hands lower. And the sound is incredible off the club. It's that sound of why we play golf. It actually makes it easier to hit your woods and your driver because the higher arms, a lot of golfers get the club going over and down, down to the ground. Your golf game goes down into the ground when the club does that down into the ground thing. So we're staying over the ball, hands in. Golf is much more enjoyable swinging the club in. Solid strike. Effortless power. Mm. Wow. That's explosive, isn't it? This will be what a lot of people say is a hard club to hit. You know, you go to those golf lessons and the guy's like, Hey, um, uh, so you can't hit your driver? Um, but I got an idea. Don't pull the driver out, just hit the three wood instead. You'll be okay. If I had a dollar for the amount of times I've heard somebody tell me that they went to a lesson and the guy said, oh my gosh, I started hitting the fairway more because the guy told me don't use the driver. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. If you can't hit the driver, change the swing so you can hit the driver. Hmm. You see how low those hands are compared to where you might be? And how much more tucked in my right arm is against my side than where you might be? Getting the hands low will fix a lot of problems. It fixes not only a downswing, but fixes like that flying away elbow stuff. Just keeping it low around your body. Stay ball. Why are you gonna do it? Don't do that. Mm, wow, that's on a string. That's like therapy right there. That's good therapy, golf therapy. Golf feels good, life is good, and we do that more often without having to do tons of practice. What else could you want with your life? And that's what I'm teaching people to do in the Segudo.golf online golf school. It's a system to play better golf right now. Life's too short to play golf that's not fun, so play golf that's more fun. I'll see you next week. Hey there, Segudo golfers. Tom Segudo here, coming to you from the beautiful Tradition Club in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Today, we're looking at one of the most consistent golf swing keys to get you hitting the ball with a lot more power and accuracy. And it's all about the downswing. I see so many of you at the start of your downswing trying to fire your hips, meaning you're turning your hips a lot in the downswing. But this is a huge problem. I know you're probably seeing all this advice over the internet saying, fire the hips, fire the hips, fire the hips. And here we are saying, don't fire the hips. Why? Well, the big problem is firing your hips so soon is kind of like shooting a gun before you aim it. When you start firing those hips, you turn the hips at the start of your downswing, the club starts moving over, down, and across the golf ball. And what's that mean? It just means death for the ball flight. It's going off the planet into the woods. You're rarely hitting the fairway. Your ball striking is very inconsistent. You're hitting a lot behind the ball and it's tough to get a crispy divot. There's almost no power too. So the way to increase your power is to slow your hips. 
And stick with me here because this is a really important key. You've got to train the hips instead of turning so soon, we've got to get them moving towards the target first. So slowing the hips gets you going more targetward, puts more weight on the front side. If you find that you're a golfer ends up getting a lot of weight on the back side and falling back through the shot or standing up, think about your hips. As I start down, the hips begin moving towards the target. This is the key. The hips don't really start spinning out. They don't ever do that. You've got to learn to store the power in your hips and use it at the right time. So if you're using your power at the wrong time, you're going to have bad ball striking and no power. That's no fun. So here's what's happening. I start down by moving weight towards the target, the club staying behind me. That's a huge key. This is downswing success key number one, path. Never getting over here, never going down and deep into the ground. No, we've got the path of the club staying behind you with the weight moving forward. It's only at this point then do we unleash the wrath of the hips on the golf ball. You know that's a beautiful thing because this is what's happening. It's like you're loading more gunpowder into your gun and then pulling the trigger and huge explosion. I'm doing that right here, loading it, loading it, loading it because the hips are being stalled. I'm slowing them down. They're stored. And then I'm saying it's time to unleash them. And there's a huge swath through the ball. It's like that punch sound you're in all the movies. It's like Bruce Lee. Whoosh. You got to learn to tell your hips, no, you can't fire so quickly. And I know you want to fire them so quickly. So here's the trick. I've got a handy dandy alignment stick here. Best training aid in golf, like $1.99 at Home Depot. And I've got an alignment stick here for my target line. If your hips spin out with this drill, you'll know for sure. Take this stick and shove it between your hips in my belt loops. Go in between the belt loops. Tom, where are you going with this? This is kind of crazy, man. You're going off the deep end. We're not going to hit a ball with this because you'll probably end up hitting the stick. But the whole point of this is to match up the hip line with the foot line here. Now, when I start down, check this out. My hips are even with the ball prior to impact. After impact, they fire. This will get the club on the proper path and then through. The feeling I want you to have though is a little bit more extreme than that. It's like you're dragging your hips without turning along this line for a longer time. So I want you to feel like you're pushing those hips, sliding them along that line. That's gonna give you a lot more weight on the front side. This is good. You're gonna keep pushing that weight to the front side and I'm matching the line. It's a crazy looking position, yes. But if you know golf, you know feel isn't real. So we need to train lateral and then hit the ball and feel the turn later. So here we go. I might hit a ball with the stick. Oh geez, this could be interesting. I'm gonna set up, top of backswing, start my downswing moving lateral and hit. Look afterwards, I've turned my hips. Do not fire the gun before you aim it. In our case, do not fire the hips until you've slid laterally enough to this point in the downswing and then fire. You'll see that the ball is going, exploding off the face here, but what happens if I spin out? Geez, my hands are probably gonna hit the stick on the way down. Turns out this stick's actually a good investment. Hmm, I won't be able to hit this ball if I do that. But if I focus on the opposite, keeping those hips moving laterally, just turning my shoulders, downswing, lateral. Everything's going towards the target except my head. Sliding along that line. Ooh. Let's hit one slowly, because this is interesting. Oh, that was the best. You know, I did not even think that this drill was gonna come out today, because you're watching it come out for the first time as I'm seeing it. This is even better than what I envisioned. This is gold. I might have to do this more often. You should be experiencing some of this gold too. There's gold in them hills. It's like that mac and cheese commercial. Remember they said, there's some gold in that mac and cheese. Yeah, that's what's happening here. So keep pushing those hips forward. Slow, slow, slow. 
Mmm. Dang, that feels good. Tastes good. I'm delaying the hips. Does this work with the driver? Well, it's gonna actually make you drive a lot better. If you don't have your driver's license, you'll get one after this. Most common driver flaw on the planet. I see this in all the lessons I give online. It's kind of like when people introduce themselves, they say, hi, my name is, but then they say, I fire my hips too early in the downswing. So it's like, hi, my name is Bob, and I fire my hips too early in the downswing. And I'll be like, hi, Bob, nice to meet you. I'm sorry about those hips. Let's get them from firing. And basically, that's how we introduce ourselves in golf world now. So with the driver, it's the same thing because the most common driver problem is to fire the hips early and you get in this over the top position and then you look like that guy on the infomercial who's hitting the ball all over the planet. And it's like, before he used the GX7, he was hitting it off and then he got the GX7 and he's hitting it straight. Can't stand those, they're so predictable. Don't be predictable. So I get set up here, same thing. Just don't spin. Ow, that hurt. Come on, they, they wanna go. Do you wanna go? No, no you don't. You don't wanna mess with this right now. It's like, it's like those rabid squirrels. Ugh. They're out right now, it's pollen season, they're out. All right, enough, enough messing around, hips. No, stop, stop, stop. This can be you on the driving range. Stop, stop, stop. No, no, there's people watching, be good. Shh, tell your hips that. All right. Back swing, down swing, feel it. Okay, that was really nice. Don't expect to hit that one well. I mean, it's a segmented swing. Just the form is what we want right here. Don't spin out. DSO, don't spin out. All right, let's hit a shot a little bit more full here. Nice. I'm just not spinning out my hips. Beautiful. Right in the center of the face. Risking certain death with this hip stabbing device. For only seven easy payments in 1995, this training aid could be yours. Actually, if you use code Segudo Golf at Home Depot, you can get it for $2.19. And this thing will save your life from firing those hips too early. So keep the hips slow. Don't spin them out. It goes against everything you hear. I know, blah, blah, blah. But look, if you keep getting garbage out there, you gotta change the program here to change it from garbage out there to change it to magnificent out there. So do something magnificent and different. This is magnificent and different. Lateral, slow the hips. will produce bombs and lasers out there to your target. The key to playing great golf. Have an awesome week. Imagine hitting driver pitching wedge into every green instead of driver three wood. Wouldn't life be so much better? You'd be making more birdies and pars and shooting the lowest round of your life. And there's just one thing keeping you from accessing all that power that's going to help you do that. And it's shocking because it goes against everything that you've been told about the golf swing. Today we're looking at pivoting and especially don't coil in the golf swing. A lot of golfers are taught that they need to wind up, make a big wind up and coil around their body. So as they swing back, they're keeping the trail leg flexed, and my right leg staying really flexed, and I feel this tension build up through my right side here, all the way up through my lower back. Now this feels powerful, no doubt about it, and I was one of the people who used to try this. But this is a recipe for power loss and back pain and injury. First, power loss. Well, if I wanna hit the ball far in the golf swing, I don't need to do a whole lot of shifting and lifting. I can get plenty of club head speed just keeping my weight more forward and turning my hips. Check this out. I mean, that was a really effortless swing and I just let my body turn. Now when I coil, I don't get to access some key power sources. The first one being my hips. I need my hips to turn in the backswing to access this. Now, a lot of us try and get a 90 degree shoulder turn. So you want this big shoulder turn. Well, the problem with resisting and coiling is they force you to turn 90 degrees over a stiff lower half. I feel really wound up, but nobody can really do this. Your body's not designed to do this resistance model right here. If your body's telling you by resisting, it's saying, hey, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. And when I coil and wind up, I'm not getting a full shoulder turn. I can force 90, but my body doesn't wanna go there. When I uncoil and I allow my body to work naturally, 
the hips turn, and boom, the shoulders turn. I don't need to turn my shoulders 90 degrees. I just need to turn them 45. So look at this, hip turn, boom, the shoulders have turned 45. So all I need to do is engage the shoulders. There we go, 45 degrees of shoulder turn, 45 degrees of hip turn, that's 90 degrees of shoulder turn. Don't do the math, Tom, stop doing the math today. But we're gonna uncoil to get more speed. So watch the shoulders move, and there we go. I just let the shoulders move freely. To uncoil, you do the opposite of resist. You allow. So to get the power of the hips, you just have to work on straightening the trail leg. I'll just work on getting this leg more straight, not locked, but just straighter. And as I straighten this leg, my body's allowed to move freely through the swing. Another thing we look at when you start coiling, how this affects your backswing negatively. So if I keep resistance here, a lot of times golfers who aren't flexible enough, they'll stop about here. They can't really swing through the ball. They feel all stuck. And what happens after this is they try and reach for more power. This comes in the form of one, a sway, or two, a breakdown of the arms. So you're really just fighting your body, when in reality, you need to allow your body to work. I've seen golfers that are like 90 years old coming to me with the sway. Yeah, just recently, a 91-year-old golfer, he was swaying, and then we opened up the hips, boom. He got this big backswing all of a sudden, a backswing the same length as any tour player. So once he works on uncoiling, he started working on weight forward and allowing the hips to turn. And then he starts sizzling the ball much further. And it feels great on your body. You don't wanna swing in pain. You don't wanna spend time at the doctor's office for your golf game. You'd rather be out here playing and your doc saying, everything's good. So uncoiling is the secret to more power. So I'm getting more hip turn, more shoulder turn, and my body feels great. And the same is true with all the clubs in the bag. In fact, with the longer clubs, you're just gonna get more freedom. So the longer club gets, the bigger the turn, the more hip turn, the more shoulder turn, the farther the ball's gonna go. Think about uncoiling. I'm gonna try and point my hips at the camera over there. The more I can uncoil. There we go again. Good shot. And you like the hips are spinning to the zone beautifully because of that. I'm no longer fighting, I don't feel tension, I feel free flowing. I feel like I'm on an island somewhere just hitting balls. And that relaxed swing, seeing the ball go that far with that much of a relaxed swing is a beautiful thing. By the way, I've got a free mini course, go.sugudo.golf. There's some great drills in there to help you access effortless power and strike the ball like that. Link in the comments and description below. So when it comes to your golf swing, think about uncoiling. So we're not winding up anymore. We're not getting ourselves stuck. We're just gonna allow the body to work. The shoulders and the hips get pulled around. The weight stays forward, boom. That's all you need. And when you do that, you're gonna be a much happier golfer. You're gonna love hitting the ball like that. I'll see you on a future episode.